Thank you, Dylan. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about how benefit coverage or, or the commitment from health insurance to help pay can influence the, the use of a new technology. Oops, wrong way. This is uh, a quick image of how health insurance looks in California, at least our estimates for how it will look in 2017. The brown wedge is the uninsured, about 2.7 million. The gray wedge is people who have health insurance that's subject to neither of California's state regulators. And the dark blue is the state regulated health insurance with the bar chart breaking those folks out between the two. It's kind of a, always interesting to note too that in the bottom of that bar chart, DMHC regulated plans have the majority of the Medi-Cal or Medicaid uh, beneficiaries in our state. Now the exact list of tests, treatments, and services that a state regulated health insurance company will cover it's influenced by market forces, what purchasers want and what they're willing to pay for, as well as by state and federal law. Now proposed state mandates are what my program, the California Health Benefits Review Program, considers. So a key thing we do is look and try to establish what is already going on and what would a law change, how many more people would have coverage for that benefit. To base us in uh, a particular subject, I think that's always helpful, Let's talk a little bit about breast cancer tests because we just looked at, my program just looked at a, a mandate that would have required a particular form of coverage. There are two forms of mammography, um, film and digital mammography. Digital mammography is often referred to as, as 2D mammography at this point. And both are very broadly covered by state regulated health insurance at this point. And they are both pretty broadly required by both the state government and the ACA. However, there's a third digital breast tomosynthesis, or DBT, which you sometimes hear referred to as 3D mammography. It is not addressed by the state laws or the ACA. It's something newish, and therefore there is uh, room for, for change. This is the subject that we just looked at. What would happen if a state law required coverage for DBT? In those terms, we, we found that uh, coverage is not universal. Among the folks who are enrolled in the state regulated plans, it's about 1.53 million have coverage for digital breast tomosynthesis. But if you change the law, you'd add about 9.7 million people to that pot, which would be a 63% increase. In terms of the tests themselves, we estimated it's probably about 1.2 million per year. But if everyone had coverage, this is one where we think there would be almost a million more of the tests in a given year, an 81% increase. Now, you have to remember that uh, utilization is not only impacted by coverage. Some things are limited by the fact that it is perhaps not something as useful to very many people, or, or if you imagine there just aren't very many machines, that also could limit the situation. This would not be the case for this particular test. Most mammograms that can do a 2D digital mammogram can also do this, the DBT. And because it is used as a screening tool, there's a large number of women for whom, as a screening for breast cancer tool, it might be applicable. Therefore, we said that, yes, that extra million tests would probably occur. And this would actually have some effect on user expenses. That's all the cost sharing, plus anything that was paid out of pocket for the, the tomosynthesis tests. We said it would actually save the enrollees about 10.8 million. Mostly that's coming from the fact that some folks were paying when their insurance did not cover. Premiums, though, would go up, because premiums, of course, are based in part on anticipation of use. Therefore, if the carriers had a similar idea of what use would look like in the future, that we would expect them to raise rates by about 50.3 million in that year. Now, of course, California is very large. There's a lot of premiums being paid. 50.3 million is only a 0.04% increase for California. But there's something here that I, I would point out that our, our program all, not only projects what does it look like for cost utilization, but a legislature also is usually interested in but what would happen to the health? What would the health outcomes look like? So our faculty considered the existing evidence, and they found that compared to no screening, there is clear and convincing evidence that digital mammography alone leads to reduced mortality related to breast cancer and may detect breast cancer at an earlier stage among some subgroups of women. Now, if you added tomosynthesis, and that's currently how it's done. Currently, it's the tomosynthesis with the digital mammography. If you added it, it is possible that there could be some reduction in recall rates, and there could be some additional detections earlier, but it's, it's limited numbers. 
And our faculty found that there is insufficient evidence to indicate whether adding the tomosynthesis, the DBT, would affect either of these clinical outcomes, mortality related to breast cancer or early stage detection. Our faculty's findings were pretty similar to what these national entities put forward. Of these six, only one, the American College of Radiology, really is noting that they do not believe tomosynthesis is investigational at this point and promoting its use. The others also all indicated that they believe at this time there is insufficient evidence to recommend that tomosynthesis be added as a screening technique for women of average risk. This is a, a point that I wanted to make here, is that although there is, if you recall, more than half of the enrollees already have coverage for DBT and are using it. This is happening in advance of what you would think of as the, the best and most ideal science to support that use. Similarly, the legislature is considering asking for all state regulated enrollees to have coverage. This too is being done somewhat in advance of exactly what the science is. Now my faculty would like to remind everyone Insufficient evidence is not evidence of no effect. It is insufficient. It could be present, but we do not yet know at this time. This is a case, I think, where the, uh, the laws and the carriers often respond to many different issues, and the science is a piece that we, we shouldn't leave out as we talk about this. And with that, if you would like to know anything more about our research on this topic or others, I would invite you to visit our, our website. Our program puts up all of our reports free of charge and available not only to the legislature, but to stakeholders and anyone else who's interested at chbrp.org. Dylan, I think I can turn it back to you now.